Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're all here. Welcome to a new pick a card reading. Today we are looking at some healing advice from your teenage self. I feel like a lot of times we look at our inner child, what our child is trying to, you know, our inner child is trying to say to us, but we also do receive quite a bit of wounding sometimes in our teenage years. So I wanted to see what kind of advice our teenage self would give to us, and I think that'll be a little bit different. Hopefully, quite interested. I'm excited for this reading, so hopefully all the messages come and translate well. And I will go ahead and show you the options that I have for you today. Right, so for option number one, I have black tourmaline, very crumbly crystal. <laughs> I actually completely forgot I had this crystal, so I'm happy to bring it back into the readings. So we've got some black tourmaline here for those choosing option number one. Next up for option number two, we have this tiger's eye. Right, and for option number three, we have a piece of Zubi. Right, so I thought I'd give you a better view of all the crystals. And I want you now to take a deep breath in and out and to ask yourself which of these crystals or options has a message for you. And I will see you at your reading. Before we begin, please do remember that this is a general reading, so only take what resonates and leave the rest behind because you are not the ugly stepsister. Please do not force that shoe onto your foot. Right, hello there. Option number one, those of you who chose the black tourmaline, welcome to your reading. Okay, so already pulled some cards. Well, I pulled most of your cards. But I wanted to kind of see, first of all, before we begin the message, where this teenage self is kind of coming from, maybe what's occurring in their life right now. So maybe it will help us understand why you're receiving this particular message or something like that. I don't know, I just feel very drawn to picking up on that part of this reading or this, I don't know what the word is, but yeah, I just felt like diving into that a little bit. So we've pulled some cards for where this teenage you know, self is coming from. So for example, maybe what they're experiencing right now or what stage of life they're in. And maybe this will kind of connect you to that teenage self as well as you go through this reading. So I do feel like this version of your teenage self was at a point where there was a lot of changes happening in their life. And they were maybe in a... In a uh, stage of excuse the lighting changes but in a stage of like decision making so maybe they were choosing schools maybe they were choosing what they wanted to do for their future careers um we both have kind of like the chariot and the lovers here so lovers you can talk about kind of a decision choosing between two different things and then also a chariot is about direction so knowing deciding what direction to take particularly as we have the ace of pentacles here as well i'm thinking maybe you guys were choosing between a particular career choice or schooling for some of you although career is coming through strongly here i feel like this was your teenage self it feels like it's in a mode of or a mindset of now's the time I need to buckle down. Like now's the time I need to get serious about what I want or where I wanna go in life. But also this is quite difficult for me. I don't really know what to choose. And there's a lot of emotions involved here. Involved here. Um, I did feel like your teenage self might have been crying a lot or at least there was tears involved here. But also, it's not too heavy. I don't know how to explain the distinction maybe, but it's like, yes, this was a pressurized or difficult moment for them, but also 
it didn't stop them from enjoying their teenage years necessarily it didn't really stop any have a definitive stop on any progress like i see a, i feel a sense of maybe partying was going on or you were like socializing a lot for example like it didn't get in the way of that area of your life i should say excuse the noises um i just want to clarify this queen of cups energy here the what Yeah, so we do have the five of five of cups coming out of here, which I heard the word perspective, and we have the queen of wands coming out here as well. Yeah, so this was definitely a reflective moment for your teenage self. Um, Again, reflecting on what actions they need to take in their life. Where are they going? What do they kind of want out of life right now or in the future? Like kind of looking ahead, really. It's like, how am I going to make these changes to get what I want? So for example, am I going to go to university and do a degree? Am I going to go to apprenticeship? Um, Am I even, do I even care about school? Do I want this for myself or do I want something else? Because it does come, for you guys, this is coming from the heart. So you are thinking about kind of what you desire deeply and what you emotionally want, not just as in, oh, I want to be a doctor so that I can make loads of money. It's also like, what do I love doing? So when I hear a perspective, it's like a shift in perspective for you guys. Like sometimes when we're younger, you know, we're doing a lot of what our parents want us to do, what other people tell us we should be doing. And then we kind of reach a certain point and we're like, wait, but what do I actually want from this? What do I want from my schooling or life or my future? And I do feel like you guys kind of ha having this shift at this point in your life, where you're kind of like thinking about or reflecting on where, um, your own expectations come for yourself and where other people's kind of stop for you. Right, um, some of you guys might have like quite pushy parents as well, I do feel that sense here. Maybe quite opinionated parents. <laughs> so this could have been quite hard for you to do, to kind of step away from what other people want for you or expect of you. So I think let's move in to the healing message from them now. So I did pull your cards already. Yeah. right so again this is kind of reflected in the message here for what stage your um teenage self was being back then as well sorry about all the noise there's people in the house doing stuff and I apologize um but anyway yeah so this is reflected in the message that your teenage self has for you right now again career could be heavily on your mind um I feel like it's kind of a feeling of how am I going to make money or how am I going to sustain my dreams, sustain the things that I love to do on a kind of long-term basis. There might be a kind of um, poverty mindset in a way, like, you know, not having enough, feeling like you can't really, you're trying to figure out how you can sustain a life that you want to live.
Some of you guys might even be thinking about walking away from a particular job as well. And that could even be impacting this. Because it does feel like, again, a decision is coming up in here. Maybe you guys are thinking about a certain job. Should I take the job? Should I not take the job? Um, should I get a new job? Should I not? Like, it's very almost career focused for you guys. And so you might also have a creative passion that your teenage self, maybe this even came back to your teenage self, you originally wanted to pursue something creative or had a love for something and kind of was debating between the two kind of things. Because I did feel like the decision was coming from almost like this emotional self or realm where it was a bit like, this is what I love to do, but will this help me provide for my future? Is this what my family wants for me? That type of conversation happening. And I feel like this is a bit, this is reflected here again, where, especially with the score of cups too, in this deck, I always see this as quite a creative energy here, like a new lease of life, a passion. And then almost this disinterest in what you currently are doing or you currently have for yourself. So let's get some clarifiers. We'll go with this stuff. Let me get some clarifiers for what this message is, a healing message from the teenage self is. I do feel like there is a kind of a message from your teenage self about walking towards your passions, leaving behind these, again, expectations for yourselves, other people's opinions maybe, especially these fears that are around money or sustaining yourself, that type of thing. A lot of the times when our parents do have high expectations of ourselves, it's because they're worried about our ability to provide for ourselves in a way. So, especially when it comes to creative careers. So this could also be something that you kind of embedded or absorbed as well. I read the Four of Cups here, please. What message does the teenage self have for them? Why is the Four of Cups here? Oh. So we do have the Sun card here. That kind of was coming out in reverse, actually, for you guys. So I'm going to put that in reverse. And then I'll see what's on the chair, please. Yep, yeah. Ten of Cups. Again, a lot of emotion here. So your teenage self definitely wants you to tap into your emotions more. Listen to what your emotional self is telling you because it is important. Our emotional well-being is just as important as our mental well-being, as our, I don't know, logical mind. Like, they both, everything intertwines, and I know society likes to kind of break them apart and separate them, but that's just not how it works as humans. So why would we try to, you know? Like, we're not robots. Um, can I pray the eight pentacles, please? The message, yeah. There's that two of wands coming out here, which is like that decision desire to kind of expand particularly if this is coming to something that you need to work hard in if it's coming to a career a business idea maybe even in this imagery here on this eight of pentacles card let's just wait for it to focus on one side we have kind of like books it's very plain it's very <laughs> boring in a way like it's and then we have this vibrancy these purples here which I think these are like herbs and I guess kind of tapping to that spiritual side so that could be something that you're interested in as well but I think it's also highlighting that contrast between yourselves in terms of um going down this more the road that has been traveled the the how am I trying to describe this now <laughs> um 
like the teacher, the doctor, the engineer, the, the very much like you've got your professional title and everyone knows what it means compared to maybe like a spiritualist or a artist or a musician, something that's a bit more emotional, that's a bit more less structured. This could even be like leaving a nine to five to go to a into like your own business and be an entrepreneur or something like that where again there is less structure there can be less structure um can i find the five cards please, please for the message so that king of wands where we did have the queen of wands for your um the stage at which your inner child was sorry your teenage self was in actually mm -hmm. and one's energy again is for me is very like passion following that drive what lights you up what makes you feel warm inside what makes you say yes this is me this is what i want to do that very much aries energy sorry by the eight of cups oh. And then the Two of Swords again, that decision or the indecision that's happening. Should I stay? Should I leave? How does it go? How, should I stay or should I go? That's what I meant to say. Should I stay or should I go? Eight of Cups, Two of Swords. And the Two of Swords also has the moon in the background. Obviously, it's a sword card, so it's using logic. It's using um, facts, like it's planning everything out mythologically. But with the moon here, it also talks about the need to tap in to your emotional realm. What is your intuition telling you? What are your emotions telling you? Just as much as what is your logic telling you? Like, you could, it's not necessary that you have to be like, okay, well, my emotions are telling me that I don't want to have being this job anymore. So I'm going to quit tomorrow and I'll figure it out from there. Like, by intertwining both logic and emotions you can say okay my emotions are telling me that i don't really like this job so i'm going to logically plan out a way for me to exit this job and do something that i actually love to do or find a a career or passion that actually will fill me will emotionally fulfill me eight ten of cups and i do see this might have been causing you or is causing you a lot of anxiety as well with the nine of swords here Again, swords being all in the mind, overthinking about things, feeling stressed about how you can achieve this emotion of fulfillment for yourself. And then we have the sun energy here again, which is that fire, that Leo, what makes me shine. The sun is about the ego. It says, it's, it says, I am, who are you? Who do you want to be in this lifetime? How do you want to live your life? You know? Really thinking about those questions. So what um, healing guidance or advice does your teenage self have for them please? The tower card here, that's in reverse. We have the Hermit, the Knight of Swords. So I feel like your teenage self is definitely telling you it's great. Like you need to, like yes, you need to go inwards. You need to reflect at this time. Um, maybe taking time away from people, external things, so that you can really figure out what your heart is trying to tell you or your inner self is trying to tell you but after you've done that there is a need to take action there is a need to put in the the action the drive to get where you want to go ten of wands so Ten of Wands, putting down those burdens, responsibilities that others have of you. Like these are not all your sticks to carry. These are not all your goals to carry. Like these could be your family's passions, your family's goals for you, um, 
if you're married maybe your partner's goals for you like are these all of your goals or could you just be holding two sticks could you be holding one stick which is a lot easier to carry than ten it's time to break down or I feel like Honestly, you have been or the universe has been because with the tower card, I always see the universe being involved here, like maybe something being out of your control here. Um, yeah, so the universe has been breaking down these structures just for you because these foundations have not been built on something that is honest or true for you. So, for example, maybe back when you were a teenager, and you were trying to make these decisions for your life you did allow the opinions of others to sway your decisions or you did allow ideas about money or what would be financially beneficial opposed to what would actually fill you up emotionally to sway your decisions for your life and now you're finding that these foundations that you've built things on which were say i want to have a good job so i can have money um i want to be able to support my family all these kind of external things that weren't about you those were the foundations that you brought that you built this current reality on are now kind of crumbling down they're kind of you're kind of realizing that they're not as sturdy as you initially thought they were and that just means that it's time to rebuild and that can be a scary thing 100 percent, 100 percent, it can so I think let's go on to your oracle cards. All right, I think I'll start with these. Let's go here. Nice. Right, so here we have Hawk Spirit. Let spirit be your guide. Even if you don't really feel like you're connected to spirit or angels or God or whatever it may be for you. Um, I do still have a sense that this is also your higher self. This is your inner wisdom. Guide, allowing that to be your guide here. Opposed to all these external things, people, structures, whatever they are. But your guide needs to come from within now. And again, hawk, it reminds me of that kind of idea of perspective. And our perspective is limited to, our perspective can be limited to what society expects of us or what society has told us things are, how things should be. Like, okay, all the people who earn a lot of money are either doctors, lawyers, like all the big main jobs, let's say. But the, the thing when people follow their creative passions they don't earn money they can't sustain themselves which absolutely is not true at all <laughs> like look how much musicians earn look how much actors earn those are all very creative jobs and even if your job isn't something that you've seen before like a youtuber people didn't know they could be youtubers until people started to be YouTubers and look how much they can earn. And I know it doesn't all just come down to finances, but this is just kind of an example of how we do place these limitations on ourselves based on the boxes that society have put in place for us. So it's like now tap into that higher wisdom, that spiritual wisdom of even the wisdom say of manifestation where you are the creator of your own reality and which means that you are always going to be in control of what you create just the same way when you were a teenager and you were making that decision those decisions created this reality for yourself it wasn't everyone else it was still you whether or not you were following what everyone else wanted of you so even now if you choose something different you will then be creating that reality for yourself so we do here we do have here sweets results await be spirit which I feel like it's quite a comforting message in terms of if you actually are starting to work on something that you love, maybe you are having a side hustle right now or you um, yeah, have something that you love and maybe you want to turn it into a career or you're not really sure yet. It's like 
sweet results await here. I even feel as if regardless of what you choose for yourself, sweet results will await here. And I feel like you will kind of go for what your heart is desiring because I don't think this would be coming up again if this wasn't meant for you. So do trust this. Do trust that goodness awaits you. Have faith in that. And here we have fixed moon, hold your vision again. Hold that vision that you have for yourself, that future desires that you have for yourself, because they're possible. This is what your teenage self wants you to hear, is that this is possible. Everything is really positive here. You even have your treasure is at hand. <laughs> so goodness is coming to you. Great things are coming to you. Even if you guys don't resonate necessarily with um choosing a wrong decision first of all i wasn't necessarily saying that your decision was wrong when you were a teenager but even if you kind of always had this creativity about you maybe you were always doing side hustles and that's kind of um hasn't really produced anything as of yet like maybe you completely ignored everyone else's wishes for you and you've been working and grinding on this for a really long time now and you're kind of like thinking did i make the wrong decision did i should i have chosen the more secure path actually because this doesn't seem to be working for me like you know i'm struggling a bit with finances here i'm really struggling to shine my light and step into my power fully or i feel like i haven't done that yet then regardless of which direction you chose or how you got to this point now, beyond here, sweet things really do await you and there is a lot of good things coming to you, is what your teenage self wants to come and say. Like I said, your, te your treasure is at hand. And this one says, sure, you can always find prettier, handsomer, skinnier, wiser, richer, younger, zippier, but more often than not, one learns the most, laughs the loudest and smiles the widest, when, with those they've already found, especially when they stop looking elsewhere. Actually, Zipia is on a for quite few lists, anyway. Um, so as much as I feel this message is actually saying like, your treasure is at hand, like you have this, you know how they say, um, you're already living the reality that you want to live in a way, like even though your external reality might not reflect that, your internal world is continuously creating that. And in a way you are living that reality because if I don't try and <laughs> confuse myself right now or you realize right now, but technically when you get to that position, when you say you want a big, big house or you want a fast car, when you finally get there and you reach that point, when you look back, you would have, you would be looking back on the moments where you didn't have that, if that makes sense. So technically you are living that reality because that is part of your reality. The part where you don't have it right now is is your reality. And the part where you do have it is also your reality. Does that even make sense? I feel like it makes sense in my mind. It makes sense in my mind. I don't know if that makes sense for you, but you know, like they're all connected basically is what I'm trying to say. And then we also have, there's a deeper reason for each of your questions, seek it. It says guidance, attention, help, maybe, love, always, criticism, never, never. The question was what to give others, if anything at all. Isn't it fun being you? Sometimes the back, the back really does throw me off here, but going on the front, um, there's a deeper reason for each of the questions, for each of your questions, seek it. Yeah, so if you have been craving this emotion, of, if you've been feeling emotionally unfulfilled, let's say that, if you have been feeling like you need, that your energy has been just dwindling, like there's something that's missing from your life, is what I'm trying to say, delve into those that area, delve into that those missing pieces and try to figure out what is missing from that, because that's where you're going to find these passions of yours. 
a tip I have as well is if you kind of don't know what you love to do, even if this isn't like, oh, I want to forget about my career, but this might be, I want to start a new hobby. I want to just have a creative outlet the same way I did when I was a teenager or younger. Look back to those years and think about what those, what things could you have done every single day if you could? Or what things did you just love to do? When you were doing it, you enjoyed doing it so much it wasn't a chore it wasn't a task it was just like I could do this all the time or you just gravitated towards that activity or that thing whatever it was like look back to that and kind of reflect on what those things were and maybe bringing those into your current life right now I feel like a lot of you guys might be in your adult years obviously I'm looking at teenage years so and obviously you're a teenager from when you're about 13. So you could be watching this when you're 18. But I do feel like a lot of you guys are like mid-20s and above, I feel like. So, um, yes. Oh, one more thing I want to pull is some self-care cards for you. Right, so we're going to pull some self-care cards for your from your teenage self, even. Let me just take this one out because it's a little explicit, explicit <laughs> for YouTube. But let's get some healing guidance from the please. This also might be an indication for hobbies that you might have enjoyed then as well. If you are feeling a little bit stuck on that area. I feel like I'm out of focus, sorry. There we go. If you've been feeling a bit stuck in that area, this could also help. But we'll see what we get coming out here. So, you guys, one more thing yourself, please. Another thing I would say is I'm pretty sure black tourmaline is like a way of getting rid of negative or external energies. And I do feel like that is something that has really been impacting you throughout your life so far so i would definitely say maybe you want to get some black tourmaline but it is also just an indication of the kind of energy that you want to embody is a kind of cleansing of your external energies right now yeah so these are all very very kind of like psychic or no i should say energetic advice um self-care advice right now so if you are also someone who has just been starting getting into maybe a bit more spiritual things getting into tarot getting into i don't know there's so many different things but um if you are kind of just getting into this or you feel drawn to this and it's been a little bit of an interest for you I definitely feel like you guys are shifting on an energetic level and this is meant to happen this is a part of your your life course so like it says there's deeper reasons for each question you seek don't run away from this don't you know try not to suppress this even if it makes you different from those around you because you're just going to kind of make your life more difficult. It's not going to affect anyone else. It's going to affect you, right? So we do have here sound healing. Again, very, you will notice as I go through these very energetic methods of soothing yourself, of shifting your energy. So we have sound healing. We have make an altar here. Also with connecting with your ancestors. So you might actually have ancestors who were into these things who all have or who have experienced these troubles as well. Um, this could also be a uh, a generational thing, a generational thing of not following your heart, not following how you feel, opposed to what you think you should be doing or what you feel obligated to do. You know, there can be a lot of you know generational wounds patterns are sometimes there's a lot of them like sometimes you might think oh that's my generational pattern but it's like no but that plus that plus that plus that so this could be a part of a generational wound or pattern that you have that your family has um but connecting with your ancestors which you can do through making an altar and again i kind of have a sense that like, i might be a bit out of your comfort zone so 
um obviously no pressure you can obviously choose which ones you want to do but if you have been feeling drawn to that or you've been seeing messages about alter creations or that type of thing then maybe lean into it investigate that a bit more so we do also have here ground yourself ground yourself i don't even know if that's in focus but you could be doing that through um, walking bare feet on grass, sand, rocks, whatever you wish to choose. Um, Visualising roots growing from your body into the ground and securing themselves. Um, yeah, you could also be having quite a lot of psychic, like, things happen, and a lot of synchronicities happen, like just weird stuff happening. And that might be scaring you even, so grounding yourself just reconnecting yourself back to this plane as well when you're feeling a bit overwhelmed just in general if you're feeling overwhelmed is a great way to just get back into your body and become present again so we also do have here deep breathing breathing is such a easy but very powerful technique of again just returning back to your body returning to being present filling yourself with oxygen especially if you are experiencing anxieties as well that is a great technique so yeah as you can see they're all quite energetic uh advice methods shifts i don't know what word i'm looking for but they're all quite energetic advice messages so that could be definitely something like this is all happening on quite an emotional energetic level so and i feel like emotions and uh, water in general carries quite a, a high frequency and your body definitely feels it so i feel like definitely getting down to these really simple kind of tasks and levels because they're not really that difficult to do to be honest they just need you to take time out of your day. Take a couple of, like, five minutes, you know? Like, they're very easily achievable things. So if, even if you have a lot of pressures in your life, these should be quite easy to achieve or implement into your life right now, according to your teenage self. So, option number one, thank you for coming to this reading. This is everything I have for you. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more from me, I post mostly spiritual and lifestyle content. You can subscribe down below if you're interested and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Hi there, option number, I don't know what I'm doing, sorry. Hi there, option number two, those of you who chose the tiger's eye, welcome to your reading. So I wanted to start off by putting some cards to figure out where this teenage self is coming from. So for example, maybe what stage of life they're in, what they're experiencing at the moment, just to help us understand their advice to you a little bit more. Um, first of all, I feel like your teenage self is, that's why I feel like your teenage self might be quite this sassy because I'm very much in like a sassy mood. Like, don't talk to me. A very moody mood. Um, kind of impatient as well. Uh, there was something else. Oh, there was definitely something else, but I actually can't remember what it was. Um, I got a very, like, obvious message, which is like, your teenage self is trying to figure itself out, obviously. I mean, which teenager isn't trying to figure itself out, or figure life out, I should say. But there's a very, like, contrasting energies here, where we have the Magician and the Knight of Swords, which is very masculine, very go, go, go. And then we have the Four of Cups and the Eight of Cups. Which, which is a little bit more feminine in being reflective, um, reclusive a bit as well. It's very reclusive actually, both of these. I definitely feel a lot of energy from your pile. Just as soon as I started like shifting readings, I felt a massive shift in energy. I just felt... A lot more connected to you guys so some of you guys could be like psychics mystics um just feel very powerful connection or maybe you just always get that in readings that like a reader will heavily start picking up on your energy 
you guys might have brothers as well see like i'm getting very random messages for you and it's taking me a little while to like tap into the final <laughs> get down to the point you know let's see but yeah i definitely feel a mixture of masculine and feminine here the masculine is very heavy though it's like at this point maybe your teenage self felt very comfortable in their masculine energy and not so much in their feminine like it kind of um when they would recline back into their feminine energy which was a bit more reclusive a bit more like disinterested I'm not saying the feminine's disinterested but the way it's showing up here is like i just want time alone like i just need to be alone <laughs> that kind of energy so you might have also suffered maybe a lot of hormone changes as well in your childhood like maybe you would get surges of energy and then you would feel super drained you would feel maybe a lot lower in energy and I feel like this is kind of uncomfortable area for you like you didn't feel very comfortable in this um, when your body was telling you that it's time to rest or when your body is telling you that It's time to kind of take a step back from others or from from society. I don't know from socializing <laughs> I mean, it's not even necessarily that you guys are massive socializers because the magician and the knight of swords they both don't have Anyone particularly with them. They're kind of doing their own thing I feel that that's what it is. It's like they're doing their own thing, really. Definitely very independent vibes from you guys. Oh, I've just switched those around. Okay, that's fine actually because this Knight of Swords is very much so drawing me in. Yeah, it's almost like <laughs> you guys can wear yourself out, or even this this teenage version of yourself was very much wearing itself out it was very much go 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 what can i do now what needs to be done um where can i go like i'm looking at this knight of sorts shoe bottom and how it's just like a burning red i feel like its feet are like hot just from moving so quickly from just always taking action from always going and i've never noticed that before so yeah it's like what can i like the magician here is like super intensely trying to figure out what it can create for itself what it can do what it... i don't even know what this is it's like even if you weren't you're not you weren't a sociable person in your uh teenage years it's like you are very interested in a particular subject it could be something mystic or it could be I don't know, anything, like anything random, it just have a very strong interest that kind of just drew you in and sucked you in and wouldn't let you go, <laughs> wouldn't let you go. Let me see what else we can get here. You can't play the Four of Cups for what stage their teenage self is in right now. It's coming from, what stage their teenage self is coming from. I'm choosing a tiger's eye. Get rid of four of cups here, please. There's a lot of mental energy here as well. Knight of cups. So again, there's a cups energy happening here. We'll see what we get for the eight of cups. If we get cups again. Can I for the eight of cups, please? Of course. <laughs> So three of swords, which is obviously not a cup card, but we have the heart in there, which is like that emotions again. So there is like a disconnect from your emotions. Again, this, the, like I said, the feminine feels uncomfortable. And the feminine kind of is that deep emotional realm, that ability to really reflect to sit in your emotions and feel comfortable there. So we have the lovers and the 
Six of Swords reversed. Um, the Magician, I'll try that please. And uh, we have the Queen of Swords. Like I said, there's a lot of mental energy here. Some of you guys might be air signs anyway. So that kind of detachment, um, staying very mental is very, you're very accustomed to. It was very, some, it's something that comes very easily to you. Again, the Queen of Swords can kind of be someone who's not very interested in socializing, is quite detached, is very much so like, don't talk to me. Like I'm, I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> Leave me alone. And I felt quite sassy, like... Very standoffish, in a way. The lovers and the six are sort of reversed. Yeah, I think, feel like relationships was a big thing for you at this point. In terms of maybe you struggle to make connections with people. This can be friendships or it can be romantic as well. But it's almost like that kind of stuff wasn't really of interest to you right now. Or even if it was, it's like, I don't really know what to do there. I don't really know how to tap into that energy. So I'm just going to not bother. I'm just going to stay up here in my mental to focus on my own thing maybe even fantasize about the emotional world, the relational world, but I'm not going to partake in it. Like that's too much. That's, that could possibly get me hurt. Maybe some of you guys have divorced parents as well. And that kind of, um, disrupted your emotional growth. or your ability to tap into that emotional world. So we do have the Knight of Cups as well. The ability to be emotionally expressive, to say how you feel. Yep, so this kind of teenage self that I'm seeing is someone who didn't really know how to tap into their feminine energies to who felt very comfortable in a more masculine energy of going, of doing, of taking action. Or at least they had, you had a very strong interest that kind of just distracted you or took you away from making connections with other people. And I feel like for the most part, you were kind of fine with that. At least you were kind of like, you know, that's just emotional stuff just isn't for me. Relationships, whether romantic or platonic, just are not for me. And that's fine. Like, it feels like you just don't really care, <laughs> do you know? No. You don't feel sad over it, you just feel like you don't care right now. But let's take a look at what this teenage self actually wants to tell you right now. So, yes, yeah, so you did have a lot of reversals here. So we have King of Swords showing up here where we had the Queen of Swords. We have the Four of Cups again, and we have the Magician again showing up here. Now they're all, those three are all in reverse, when I don't think they were originally, apart from the Queen of Swords when it's in reverse. So here when I look at the Nine of Pentacles, I literally get the message like, yeah, okay, you're very self-sufficient, you're very independent, cool, 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 like, okay, you made it, like, you you told yourself that I don't need anyone, I'm good on my own, I'll make it on my own, like, you got your, your ducks in a row, yay, well done, like, it seems very sarcastic, I'm sorry about that, and I don't know whether that's just because your teenage self came off as quite sassy, and that's how they're just translating the message to you anyway, but it's like, yay, woo, you did that, but, like, the rest of it's gone to shit, so, what are you gonna do now? And I don't mean like maybe your life is like in a complete mess, but it's almost like you focused so much on one area that you neglected another area. And 
There could definitely be a bit of ego here with the magician and the king of swords reverse. I'm kind of feeling that like of thinking that you know best always. <laughs> thinking you kind of can get everything done on your own. You don't really need other people because they would slow down or they'd hold you back. The yeah, slow you down. Like there is a very much still almost this interest in emotions or connecting to the emotional world with this four of cups in reverse. Okay, I wanna get to clarify it so I can understand this message from them though. Oh, I think that message I forgot to tell you originally was actually that I feel cut off from how you feel. Obviously I'm tapping into that teenage self and I do feel cut off from the feeling side of it. Again, my I feel the pressure in my head, which I mean is quite normal for me, but I just don't feel anything else apart from pressure in my head. It's just all, I feel like there's just mental energy staying there. So let's get some clarifiers please. For message from their teenage self. Healing messages from their teenage self, please. Right. Stop with the... Ten of pencils? No, sorry, nine of pencils. So interesting, we have the sun card and the ten of wands coming out there very contrasting energy like literally <laughs> look how bright that is versus two versus the ten of wands which is like this dull gray color <laughs> clarify the magician in reverse for the healing message we have the two of wands and the ten of swords coming out Open the Knight of Pentacles here. Seating this is Ross Knight of Pentacles. We have the Four of Swords here. Open the Four of Cups here in this place. Whoa, that was a lot of cards and I cannot take them all. Come on. Go again, clarify the four of cups in reverse. Come on. Cups in reverse. Oh my god, we got the four of cups again. You guys might be drawn to part number one as well because the four of cups did come out there. Um so four of cups was the four of cups. Which now it's upright. Go for the King of Swords, please. That's King of Swords reverse for the ceiling of lights. Yeah, I'm not taking all of those again. Alright, King of Swords, come on. Yeah, and there's quite a stubbornness to your energy as well. I mean, it could, again, teenage energy, not necessarily now, but you have the High Priestess in reverse now and the Nine of Swords. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, a lot of swords coming out here. This is hard for me because I do feel very cut off from the energy and I usually do read quite intuitively to so it. It does get difficult sometimes. But we're going to try our best. Let's see. Come on. Tap me in, please. Tap me in. So I'm taking, been taken to the four of swords here. Like rest, healing rejuvenation especially from when i'm being reminded of that teenage energy of the knight of so yeah the knight of swords who was very go 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 who didn't know when to rest who didn't know when to slow down and the knight of pentacles he gets things done but he knows that kind of slow and steady wins the race 
opposed to rushing ahead like the Knight of Swords does. So the message, one message I do get from your teenage self is a message of like kind of healing those wounds is is a good thing. We even have the heart here and we kind of have it being woven around this person and it's nice and full down here. And then you guys did have the Three of Swords, I think it was originally. So I do feel like if you're in a in a period of healing, this is really beneficial for you right now. You shouldn't rush to get out of this. You should not be rushing to get out of this. There's a lot that you're letting go of, or a lot that needs to be let go of with the tens here, ten of wands, ten of swords, very heavy energies. For me, the ten of wands and ten of swords is kind of like the, like, you didn't get the ten of pentacles or the ten of cups, you know? Like, those are very different messages opposed to the tens in the wands and the swords for me. These two represent heat, like endings, endings after a really tough time and a kind of need to, for things to come to an end. Like it's enough now, like there's no other way through this. You know, like I've, I've done all that I can. Because the swords can be quite a difficult journey to be on. It's like when it ends, it's very painful and it's hard, but it has to be done. There's, it's inevitable almost. There's no other way around this. So some of you guys might feel very isolated right now as well. Struggling to see a way out of this and like I said before it's like your teenage self is saying this is where you need to be right now Let's not run away from this again Like there's no there's not really any escaping these feelings that you have or this period of life that you're in right now Like you need to just move in order to get through it. You need to go through it And it's like, yes, I'm proud of your successes. I'm proud of how much you've achieved by yourself. But you haven't done that without accumulating a lot of wounds, a lot of burdens, a lot of excess baggage that doesn't really need to be here. I almost see it as like, this girl has, she made it to the top of the mountain, but she realized that the, the skies are cloudy and the view wasn't really that great and maybe I need to come back down and restart somewhere else maybe there's another journey for me to go on now that will bring me a better view bring me something better um more fulfilling I should say that will bring me a new perspective and it's almost like this two of wands is like trying to plan this journey now. Where am I gonna take this now? Where am I gonna take, sorry, I'm just trying to get this in focus. Um, Where am I going to take the lessons that I learn whilst on top of that hill or making it to that hilltop? You can see like she's got a little caravan and she's got the world here. And this is a card of planning, of wanting to expand, wanting to explore. And I think with the magician being in reverse for you this time, it's almost like, okay, but how am I going to do this? So yeah, the four of cups here is like, all the things that used to interest you before don't interest you now. There's something new that you want to experience. I don't think it was your part I said that on. But the High Priestess here is a need to tap into your higher wisdom, to tap into the things that you can't see, the intuition, 
are things that are subtle. And maybe you've always had this skill, but you've chalked it down to the back to the fact that you're very perspective, perceptive, perceptive, or you're very like you could just pay attention to details, and you've always just chalked it down to that. But actually, you have these spiritual wisdom about you. You have that innately within you. You've just never allowed yourself to really tap into that. And maybe you're having dreams, and you're seeing things, and you're trying to make sense of them. You're trying to understand what these things are. What do they really mean to me? How can I make sense of this? Some of you guys could be mediums. But you definitely see you tapping into like a spiritual side that might feel uncomfortable for you. Excuse the interruption guys. Um, let's get back to this. I can't lie, I can't remember what I was saying, which is really bad. I'm just going to pull some more cards, see if we can get anything else before we move on to your oracle cards. Right. So. Healing advice from a teenage star, please, as you choose. How you say? Healing advice from a teenage star, please. So we have the lovers again about relationships coming through here connection between the masculine and feminine you have the knight of swords popping up in here again which is a card of communication to be honest it's it's funny because the two decks always give me kind of different messages and i think that's why it's good to kind of pull from more than one but here i do see it talking about communication now being expressive And again, you have the Knight of Wands on the bottom of the deck there, which is, again, about being expressive, being open, going after what you want as well. Um, Ace of Swords. Again, there's so many swords in this reading. You guys have to have air placements. Those are Libra, Aquarius. Libra, Aquarius. Um, and Gemini, those are those. Or you could have like heavy third house placements, nine house placements, or seventh house. Let me see, let me see. So yeah, you guys could be feeling like there's a lack of clarity about your life right now. Maybe you're unsure of what to do where to go and with the two of swords here definitely being in reverse um with any kind of indecision if you are feeling it then this is a message to again tap into that intuition instead tap into how you feel opposed to solely relying on your mental cap capabilities we have three of pentacles here Talking about collaboration, working with others now, learning how to work with alongside others, how to collaborate your ideas, not be so independent, almost like independent to a fault. Queen of Wands, all about that socialization, learning how to be. Um, come on, let's go into focus. learning how to be like a social butterfly even if you feel like you can't get to that stage it's about practicing it like so many introverted people become have that extroverted ability because they practice it even if it just means you're speaking to people about things you actually enjoy talking about you know like connecting to those type of people rather than just isolating yourself all the time right i think it's best if we move on to some oracle cards See what those have to say. So we have a sandpiper spirit, which says be playful. That makes a lot of sense with the queen of wands that came out there as well. I feel like she knows how to have a good laugh, <laughs> how to have a good joke. And we have snake spirit here with time to heal. actually in reverse I feel like I need to say that was in reverse 
Time to shed those skins <laughs> with the snake here. Shed your past layers or the layers that you've kind of um, gained due to, due to hurts, past hurts. Full meaning in Capricorn, the end of a tough cycle approaches. With all those tens that you guys had, especially ten of swords, ten of wands, I do see that this cycle is, is coming to a close. But in order to fully close it out, you need to kind of go deeper. But I feel like this is a kind of a reassurance message that this will kind of end. The, the painfulness of this will end. The, the intensity of it will end, I should say. We also do have, you are adored. It says, don't be fooled by the players. Don't be fooled by yourself. There's no one more lovable nor loved than you. And I know everyone. Precious the universe. So I feel like this message is a message of, if you are feeling a bit insecure about your ability to socialize with others, about whether people just like you in general, maybe that's what's stopping you or has stopped you in the past from kind of immersing yourself in society a bit more or being a bit more open with people, then this is like a message from your teenage self that you are loved, you are adored, you are appreciated just for who you are. We also have hubba hubba here. Hubba hubba. It says, you know that dreamy look of deep, soulful love you've sometimes seen in the eyes of another as they gaze into your own. Expect a lot more of it. I feel like, yeah, again, maybe you're going to be connecting with soul families, soulmates, um, romantic soulmates, platonic soulmates, whatever they may be. I do feel like a mixture is in here. To be honest, there's nothing particularly specific in here, but... I feel like you're going to now be, especially going through this healing process and learning how to tap a bit more into that playful and fun side, a bit more of that emotional side, understanding where those emotions are coming from and how to navigate through them rather than just shoving them to the side. I feel like you are going to be able to, um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, you are going to be meeting people who can kind of meet you on your level and maybe have share the same interests as you so that you can enjoy conversating with these people and yeah that type thing so i do want to read the snake spirit one it says no matter how much you may have lost or how you have been disappointed you are called by snake spirit to shed the past and practice radical self-acceptance now only by forgiving yourself can you move on, regardless of whether anyone else is ready for healing. When you tender new skin first become when your tender new skin first becomes exposed, you may feel uncomfortable. Love yourself and remain vulnerable anyway. You have been weak, but now you are becoming strong and developing wisdom, and you will do better in the future. Snake spirit reminds you that hearts can be so easily wounded. Apologies and amends go a long way. Self-forgiveness for your role and what happens can help you heal. Remember, it is the one who has been wounded who... Uh, hold on. <laughs> Remember, it is the one who has been wounded who often has the greatest power to help heal others. Yeah, there's a slight undertone of maybe the way that you haven't have been so detached in the past has actually ended up hurting people as well in from your past and it's like instead of dwelling on the things that maybe you couldn't have provided in the past it's like well now i'm going to do things differently this time now i know that i have the capacity to meet people from an emotional standpoint as well as a mental standpoint and i know the power in that and the the privilege of being able to do that as I maybe couldn't have done before. Um, another thing, I think. Hmm. 
yeah that's what i had okay and last but not least self-care messages let's just put that one away <laughs> inappropriate for youtube shall we say right so I want one more actually. That one? You want that one? We went a bit crazy, but it's fine. <laughs> right, so when I first saw this one, which is spend time with animals. I just felt like a oh, I don't know why, but it was like a oh. Um, so I did feel like maybe some of you guys connect deeply with animals anyway, just because maybe you struggle to connect with humans, people. Um, but even if you don't, maybe you can do like a puppy yoga session, or you can, I don't know, get out into nature a bit more, borrow a friend's pet go to their house and just stroke their pet for a long time like there's something very soothing about being around animals I find anyway um so yeah that could be a really nice that is like a self-care guidance from your teenage self for you guys um we also do have sound healing here we have be still we have journal which is kind of about you tapping into maybe the parts of yourself that you aren't so proud of a bit of shadow work maybe um also writing up journaling about feelings how get just releasing those kind of those inner thoughts those emotions and just getting them out somewhere even if you are someone who kind of like doesn't trust having a journal maybe some of you guys have scorpio placements um but you're like I don't want to write down my feelings because what about if someone reads it like write it down and chuck it away or write it down and burn it like you don't have to necessarily keep it in like a a proper journal but we'll just write it in your iPhone notes or your phone notes sorry connecting with fire which I feel like again is a message about connecting to that passion reigniting a passion within you because I feel like fire and water are kind of similar-ish in the way that they both can tap into something that isn't necessarily concrete or isn't methodological but just does just feels and knows in a way and then we also do have clear your energy field as well which i don't know why i didn't show you the other cards but i'm showing you this one um clear your energy field however you want wish to do that that could be taking a shower it could be saging if you feel like that's appropriate for your culture. Um, Pedro Santos, again, same thing. Um, smudging, I don't know, things to clean your and clear your energy field. And sound healing can also do that as well. I feel like sound healing can shift your energy field. Also help you tap into different chakras as well, if that's something you're interested in. But yeah, little things to do here. And again, be still. Definitely feel like that's for your power because of how much your teenage self was on the go. Maybe didn't quite know how to be still and be comfortable in stillness. Um, and maybe that's even why you might struggle to socialise with people because you feel uncomfortable in the silences. And it's like your body's like, okay, but what do I do now? Um, I need something to say. Like you just don't want to be put in that situation. But practising peace finding peace within that stillness could possibly help you feel more relaxed <laughs> more relaxed um ice cream man okay i <laughs> feel more relaxed when you are in conversations and that kind of they kind of die down or there's a bit of quietness like just finding peace in that and being okay with that right that is everything that i have for you option number two thank you so much for coming to this reading if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know what you thought if you are new here and want to see more from me i post mostly spiritual and lifestyle content and you can subscribe down below and i will see you all in my next one bye
Hi there, option number three. Those of you who chose that piece of Zuli, please. Please? Why do I say that? The Zuli's piece of Zuli, welcome to your reading. Um, first of all, I pulled some cards on what stage of life your pre teenage self is in, like this one that we're connecting to in particular, maybe what they're experiencing at this time obviously not right now but what they would have been experiencing um or what their kind of thought process may have been um definitely feel like maybe your teenage self is a little bit or was a little bit quieter than some of the other pals anyway um maybe a lot more reserved as well so i feel like everything's very inward Um, I mean, it's not surprising, but I do feel like school was playing a big part in this person's life, in your teenage self's life right now. Um, particularly like maybe, what are they called? Like authority figures, teachers, people who they had to listen to, who they possibly could have looked up to. I feel like there's a, something about this teenage self navigating between self and others. I'm not sure, obviously I'm reading these quite intuitively, but just the six of pentacles and the five of wands here. I'm hearing the message of like, who am I and what are others to me? What are others to me? Some of you guys also might have been experiencing a lot of people coming in and out of your life. Whether this is like family or it could have been just friends, like a lot of friendship changes. Um, like friendship breakups and makeups ups and all those kind of sticky situations that happen in our teenage years. Like things ending but not completely ending, like for example, uh, relationships that kind of just went in loops or friendships that went in loops. Even this was like parental figures or siblings, I don't know, who just would leave the home and come back. Like a lot of in and out, a lot of different energies around, a lot of different people around. Having to navigate a mixture of waters, a mixture of like, energies, emotions, that type of thing. If anything is, I feel like, unlike the other pals, this Hierophant and this King of Swords isn't you. It's like it feels like other people, or another, at least two other people. One would be the Hierophant, one being the King of Swords. This one might have been a, fire, a father figure for some people, but this one feels like a teacher, a like a mentor someone who you looked up to but i feel like for some people this was someone who they had to look up to it's gonna even be like an older sibling for some of you guys as well Like even if I even if you didn't want to necessarily follow their advice or their instructions, it's almost like you had to at this point. Not sure why, but you had to. Like it could again, it could be like a parent as well. Like you just had to follow the rules of the home, even though maybe you didn't always want to, or you. It was kind of like in the middle. Like you didn't agree with everything, but also it wasn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> So that's for, it, it's kind of like a split here. So for some of you guys, you wanted to follow someone or you were inspired, motivated, or you felt guided by someone. And for others of you guys, it was like, I don't really want to follow your, your what you do, but I have to or I'm going to anyway. But this King of Swords feels very recluse. It feels very like, you can't really get to them in some way. You can't really talk to them in some way. 
just the way the sword is kind of protecting them it's like you you might want to approach them but actually they've got a big fat sword and i'm actually i'd rather not get my head chopped off like that's the kind of feeling i'm getting from this maybe there was someone who had a very sharp tongue was very opinionated maybe and that kind of turned you off like it made you not want to really approach them as much as maybe you would want to, you would have wanted to you do have the judgment card here as well like the idea of not wanting to be judged by this person not wanting to have to be subjected to their opinions about whatever that was about you The funny thing is this feels like you. This angel feels like you, which I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be the angel Gabriel, which was the messenger. I might just be making that up. So you could have shared similar placements to this person. You could both have air placements. I definitely feel quite Aquarius energy with the King of Swords here. Yes, that would make sense though, because if we were just saying Gabriel was, was the messenger angel, he was the messenger of God. So he translated the message, you know, like he didn't necessarily have his own message. He was following someone else's message. So again, here with the Hierophant, which I said was maybe you didn't always want to follow the certain path or do a certain thing but you felt like you had to, or you felt like it was just what what is done. It's kind of like, I don't see how I'm not gonna do this or why I wouldn't do this, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's a bit like a wishy-washy energy. Like you don't have any strong opinion for or against it, so you just did it. <laughs> it's like if God was like, okay, um, I need you to give a message to someone that, I don't know, um, that they need to buy oranges tomorrow it's like okay it's like I don't really want to fly around and give this message to this person but I also don't know why I wouldn't do it so why not do it <laughs> it's very wishy-washy that's so funny Yeah, and again, it's like, whilst maybe others were devoted to this part, I'm seeing this whole story here, but <laughs> whilst maybe others were devoted to this person, this thing, some of you guys might have been heavily in a religion as well. Maybe you grew up in a church or, I don't know why I specifically said church, but any religion. And there was like someone that maybe your family followed or everyone followed and you were kind of just like, I mean, I have no reason not to believe it, but I also don't 100% agree with everything. Like, you're a bit in the middle, and but there's, like, other people who are very much for it. Oh, this is strange. I mean, it's interesting, but it, it's very different to the other parts, so I'll say that. Let's see if we can get some clarifiers for this energy here, first of all kind of going a bit over but it's fine can you um clarify the death card here for what stage this teenage self was at so we have the nine of swords over the six of pentacles what stage the teenage self was at right that's too many cards i'm not taking over right five of cups clarify the hierophant here please Again, too many cards. We have the Knight of Pentacles. And the number five is standing out to me. You just have the five of cups. You've got five here and you've got five there. Um, so five is about change. So again, I feel like maybe there was a lot of change. Sh change? Wait, there was a lot of change happening in your life at this time. Or even just change in like mindsets, like very Jupiterian or ninth house energy where there's a change in belief systems. Um, maybe you're realizing that maybe you don't really agree with everything that is being said by these authority figures. Very king of swords. 
We have a star card here. And clarify the judgment here. Okay. Four of Swords. Four of Wands. Tower card. So yeah, for some of you guys, there could have definitely been a lot of issues in the family home, the family structure at this time. Maybe parents splitting up, arguments amongst people, because you have the Five of Swords here. And then you also have the Tower and the Four of Wands, which is usually for me about like a home. Some kind of foundations, or both are about foundations, but foundations are kind of shifting or breaking down or being destroyed here and i even see with the tower card that like maybe certain illusions again belief systems are very pisces and jupiterian um in time with illusions are kind of shifting or disappearing we see the We see the butterfly and the acorns down here kind of like disappearing into this atmosphere. It's like the beauty of maybe your home or the beauty of something, again, which was an illusion, is changing. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Like I said before, it's like maybe you looked up to someone or, you know, it's not even like you necessarily wanted to or you had to, but you just did. And as you kind of enter this new chapter or this current chapter of your teenage life was like these kind of ideas that you had about your life, your home, maybe your family, your culture or your religion, they started to shift and they were a bit like, actually, I don't really agree with all of that. Or maybe that just doesn't feel right to me. That doesn't really resonate with me. Or maybe I just don't even, um, I'm noticing, okay, let's just say your, your parents are getting a divorce or something, and it's like, when you reached, or they had a divorce, and when you reached this stage in your life, you're like, actually, my parents never really had a great marriage, so I can see why they had a divorce, but before then, you kind of had this illusion of like the perfect home the perfect marriage and those kind of like structures but they it's like they're almost coming to you or appearing to you now or being revealed to you now it's like these were actually illusions that i had about life and we have the star card here with the king of swords who i said the king of swords was like this person who you couldn't really access or get to but the star card is almost like this hope this wishing this dreaminess it's not anything substantial it's kind of up in the air let's see if i just get anything else before we move on here so you know i think i'm going to move on to the message now just because we are going over time quite a bit Let's actually see what message your teenage self currently has for you. It's so weird. In each pile, I've got like, say, if, again, actually, first of all, swords have been coming up. And I'm pretty sure the queen, king and queen of swords have come up in every single pile. Um, and also, it's like, if the king came up in one, the queens would come up in the next one. If the if the queen came up in the teenage life, then it came, comes up in the advice, if that makes sense. It's like one or the other keeps coming up. Right, so first things first, I'm taking straight to that seven of wands here, which does kind of talk about the opinions of others, um, the expectations of others, or just other people trying to influence your little peace bubble here, your bubble that you've created for yourself or your life and um, your own, this almost feels like your own belief systems, your own truths. And preventing other people's from kind of popping that bubble of yours. Like your inner truths. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm seeing this, and I don't think it's a sign of um, Aries, but the Seven of Swords, the woman on it has like this kind of little tattoo and it's just reminding me of Aries energy. And it's almost like returning back to that first house where maybe initially, as you first entered the world, your first house is very much so corrupted by or influenced by all these external people, these your parents, your family, their um, ideas of you. And it's almost like your whole chart is kind of, first of all, influenced by this. But as you kind of enter past this, even say 12th house perfection year, if you know about perfection years, it's like as you re-enter the first house, you kind of have this new belief system, this new outlook on life because you've you've experienced each and every area of life in a way in a at least to some degree let's say and now you're back to the first house and now it's like now i get to redefine myself for me who am i this is kind of a running theme throughout the rest of the piles but it's like who am i to me again this seven of wands she's got this kind of glow coming from within i don't know if that would be her solar plexus or what but i think it is her solar plexus actually i think her sacral would be a bit lower but let's say that solar plexus is there isn't that the the chakra that kind of talks about your inner power the almost like that vitality that will the idea of will and um what you do for you who you are what identity you hold i see this for a pentacle is kind of taking away these structures it's like yes they are very valuable yes they gave me what i needed like We have, we have the throat, we have this, the, I want to say sacral, I think we have the sacral here, let's just call it the sacral, we have the throat, we have the sacral, we have the heart, we have the root, so you can see those colours of the coins down there, right, throat, shake, sacral, heart, root, I don't know if that's sacral or solar, but let's just call it sacral, um, it's like, yes, I have each of those. Okay, I've learned about what security is. I've learned um, about emotions. I've learned about sexualities. Um, I've learned about, obviously, these are all more than that, but I'm just saying, I've learned how to use my voice and I'm going to hold on to these, but also I'm going to go beyond these. I'm going to go beyond these concepts and really start to intertwine them. I'm going to start to use them. I'm going to start to maybe shift and change them. With the Queen of Swords here, I'm taking straight to this little bowl of water that's been locked away down here. There we go. Let me try and... There we go. And this little bowl of water that's been locked away down here. You guys also could have been quite a intuitive child, always picking up on everyone else's emotions and desires and not really, again, quite Piscean, um, not really being able to tap into your own. And I think now, or the message even from your inner child, your inner no, sorry, from your teenage self is about almost becoming your own. It's like you've started to protect yourself. You've learned to protect yourself. And it's not that you're 100% closed off to people or emotions or things, but you keep them safe. You don't allow them to overrun you. Again, you don't allow other people's emotions to overrun you either. Or even if this is something you're still kind of working through, I see this as a message from your inner child about learning how to 
stand in your power, to own what you know and what you believe. Even the strength card energy here and how we have half a face of a lion and half of this kind of young woman. And it's like, you might see externally, you guys might still see this little lamb in me, this young child within me or this teenager within me, I should say. But now I'm more than that. I know my it's almost like a spirit animal energy like i have this fire within me and i've lit this fire within me and now i i possess both things i know when to bring i know when to speak up for myself i know when i am deserving of something again knight of wands that kind of fire the ability to let go, to release, to enjoy. I actually feel like moving on to your oracle cards, funny enough. But I might do another pull in a minute. But let's just have a look at these. So we have koi fish spirit, there is always enough. And we have Seahorse Spirit, Watch and Wait. We have Full Moon in Virgo, You Are Good Enough. I don't know if it's your part that I felt the Virgo energy in actually. There was one. You Are Good Enough. And I'm seeing a lot of self love coming through here. It's almost like crowning yourself, telling yourself that you are worthy, that you are the queen, you are the boss, you are the king, whatever you want to call yourself. But it's like no one needed to tell me or I'm at a point now where no one needs to tell me that I am worthy or no one needs to verbally say to me maybe you didn't have this in your teenage years where someone was like you are deserving you are worthy who gave you these affirmations like i said that was that king of swords that was kind of cut off from you whoever that may have been maybe they could have provided you with those affirmations or that reassurance that you were looking for but now it's like you're at a point now where you can get that for yourself where you can own that for yourself we have here keep it simple and we have you glow we beam thanks so this one says in case anyone should ask your heart isn't so large because of your wings it's your wings that are so large because of your heart sometimes loving so much can be pretty heavy thanks for all you've shared the universe Yeah, there's a lot of heart messages here. Like, that's why I said I felt this empathy from you, this intuitiveness from you. And your ability to tap into other people's emotions and maybe having so many other people's emotions around you in your teenage years kind of threw you off whack. Like, I don't know which one were mine, where I ended and where they started or where they, they started and I ended. I don't know which way around. I was trying to say that, but it's like, you can fly with these wings and your wings are so powerful because your heart is so big because it has endured endured so much because you have loved so much and like i said maybe people were coming and going from your life and maybe there were like friends or partners who couldn't really stick by you through all of this um but it's like with everything you have shared you have grown Keep it simple. Old souls use words very sparingly, except of course for I love, thank you, wow, now and cool. Wow, I love you now, the universe, which sounds much better than wow, now I love you. Sequence is important. 
Yeah, okay, I see it with the keep it simple and the words um, with this Queen of Swords here. It's like you almost possessed, again, when I said I felt, as soon as I felt your energy was very laid back. It's very laid back for one, but it's also very reserved. That's what I'm looking for. It's very reserved. It's like, you know, you don't need to talk the biggest talk um, because you kind of just speak for yourself. Your energy speaks for itself. You don't have to, even if, say, you were in a church or something like that, and you kind of looked at these leaders as someone who were super uh, charismatic, who were very over the top, who will almost have this kind of fakeness to them in a way. It's like, you've come to a point now where you're like, do you know what? I don't even need to say it. I don't even need to expend my energy on this. I'm even seeing the example of someone who over apologizes all the time. He's like, oh, sorry, I need to just, oh, sorry. Da, da, da. It's like, I don't even need to say those words anymore. Those little throwaway sentences because my energy speaks for itself. I demand respect just by being me. Um, I have power just from being me. So I want to read Koi Fish Spirit first. The Koi Fish Spirit who grows within a small pond reminds us with, oh sorry, let me say that again. <laughs> the koi fish who grows big within a small pond reminds us that within each of us is the potential for prosperity. Straight away, big within a small pond. It's like you've expanded beyond the people around you. And not in like a, a bad way, like you're better than them or you think you're better than them, but it's like your teenage self has come to show you that how much you have grown beyond the limitations that maybe others imposed on you or that you witnessed for yourself. Again, it's like your bubble is so big now that no one can burst it. The law of abundance ensures that prosperity is our natural state. So regardless of temporary outer conditions, you can call in prosperity and magnetically attract the opportunities and abundance you need. The message of Koi Fish Spirit is to begin to generate wealth within Sorry guys, we cut out there. Um, intention, no matter how small your pond may seem. And appreciate abundance wherever you see it. Outer conditions will come to reflect your inner prosperity. So begin to become the self who is comfortable with wealth in all forms. Even if at the moment it feels as if riches are not yours, they soon will be. Trust that outer conditions are changing to reflect that truth. Yeah, so the teenage self is coming to you for this healing message of saying like, even if the people around you aren't changing, or you feel like you're outgrowing this space, it's like you will reach a point where the outer world will start to reflect the inner work that you've done. And be assured in that. Be assured in the fact that you are growing and you have grown and that soon you will get everything that is meant for you. See, I, I just keep looking at this Queen of Wands and her, sorry, Queen of Swords and her face is so, it's like she's looking off in the distance, she's high up, she's achieved so much and she knows, she's like resting. It's like she knows that she, that, that whatever is for her will come her way. It's really weird. It's hard for me to even explain it. It's like a trust. It's more than a trust. It's like a knowing. Like even the way her sword just lays her, lays her, sorry. Compared to the king of swords, if you remember what he looks like. Um, his sword was a lot more upright. Whereas hers is kind of just slightly by her side. She has it for when she needs it. But she knows she's not really going to need it. Because she keeps it simple. She trusts. Like the lessons are there when I need it. But really it's like. Again you guys have very chilled energy. So I feel like that's coming through there as well. 
some of you guys might actually be anxious about the fact that you feel like all these changes that you've been through or these things you've experienced they're not actually making a difference in your life that could be something that you feel a little bit worried or anxious about and i definitely would say that your um teenage self is coming through here to kind of reassure you through that like you are good enough for all the things you're asking for that they will come your way that the more you just trust this and grow into yourself and show people who you are and embrace who you are you know the more set assured it will become so let's just quickly do this one hovering gracefully the seahorse observes with the perspective of one who is not engulfed by the drama remaining at a distance from all the turbulence seahorse spirit appears at the time to remind you of the need to be neutral and gain perspective I love this um, message, which is not my circus, not my monkeys, which I feel like that is your vibe. Whereas maybe before you had to be intertwined with all these different people, all their different energies. And again, that Gabriel message of being the messenger. And as a messenger, you kind of have to get involved in other people's business. But now you've got to a point where you're like, you've realized or retain yourself as you've realized that that's actually not my issue. That's not where I need to be right now. That's not where I want to expend my energy. So I'm not going to. I have no obligation to do that. It's just very self-assured. Um, so Spring wants you to know that even if you are tempted to jump into the fray and try to fix things, the best way to serve yourself and others right now is to remain calm and simply watch and see. And again, mine being taken to the uh, the bowl of water, locked away in the cage. I feel that the message from your teenage self is even if you feel this, feel like going back into maybe old habits where you used to kind of try and fix things for people, you used to try and really overextend yourself in a way. I feel like now you're energy your emotional energy has kind of been locked away where it's like you don't have access to me anymore or you don't it's not even that maybe they don't deserve access to you but it's like i have this bowl of this i have this cup of water like you know how the saying of keep your fulfill your own cup before you go and fill someone else's it's almost like you don't have the energy to expend right now on other people's energies so you need to focus on yourself right now it's a need of yours. It's like you're keeping your own emotional well-being safe by keeping it closed away. To so remain calm and simply, again, watch and see. Another message is that whenever, whatever your query, see your spirit asks you to step back from it. Be willing to explore things from different angles rather than a single one. And just observe what is possible. From the perspective of the position of the neutral observer, you will discover a myriad of opportunities and a deeper understanding of what you seek and why. And you will know beauty, truth, love and wisdom. Yeah, the Four of Pentacles actually does talk about being reserved or protecting your energy. Again, you have the um, you have the throat chakra here, the sacral, the heart, the root. You're protecting your security, you're protecting your voice, you're protecting your sacral energy, your, your life force, you're protecting your heart. And I think this is okay for you to do right now. It's a good place for you to be in. So last messages. Oops. I've literally dropped at least one card on the deck. On the floor every time for you guys. So, self care messages from their teenage self, please. Those who chose option number three, or if you said Suvi, self care messages from their teenage self, please.
Sorry, tell me this is the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> Finally. Right. So, you guys have Burning Bowl Ritual, which is all about releasing, letting go. So, again, releasing all the other people's energies, letting go of other people's queries, even your own worries as well. Like, not indulging too much in the things that you fear or on expecting change to come but just trusting that everything will work its step yeah, sorry everything will work itself out as it's meant to um you have flow like water flow like water again keeping it very simple flowing this also does talk about spending time around water maybe you have a beach near you maybe you need to take a long bath maybe you need to take a long shower um but yeah Water is a very healing source. It's also a very cleansing source. So we have that. We have a cleaning your space, making sure things are in order. Again, keep it simple. Again, very Virgo energy. If your mind feels quite cluttered, sometimes it's best to start in your physical environment to kind of just keep it things in order, know where things go. Just shape it up a little bit, you know? It really does help your mental health when your external environment looks put together intuition trusting your intuition as i said you feel very much like a intuitive pile like you know how to tap into your intuition but also trusting your intuition is an important thing and trusting when to give advice when to stay back when to kind of just put your boundaries in place as well and be like do you know what I can't be here for you right now I can't emotionally be there for you right now and I think you need to like go and give your worries to someone else at this moment because I don't have the capacity for it right now music I just had escapism so maybe music is a lovely as a nice escape for you guys um healing music soothing music fun like any type of music music just touches us all differently so definitely your teenage self is recommending that you listen to music you might also receive messages through your music as well and we finally have deep breathing here breathing your breath is your life source oxygen like it's so simple but sometimes we forget to do it <laughs> And it also helps you with anxieties as well. If that's something something you've been worried about, deep breathing. Fears, deep breathing. Overwhelmed, deep breathing. <laughs> you know it's so easy, but we forget to do it. So there's a little reminder from your teenage self. So option number three, thank you so much for coming to this reading. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. If you are new here and want to see more from me, I place mostly spiritual and lifestyle content and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.